I've tried a lot of on-camera monitors. I mean, I literally counted about 14 that I have sitting around right now, uh, and not including ones that I've had in the past and got rid of. But I can easily, without a doubt, say that hands down, the brightest, the most full-featured, the best value on-camera monitor on the market is this one right here, the OC-T7. So let's get into it. Hey, I'm Scott and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we do all kinds of tutorials, reviews, unboxings, tests, anything photo and video related. So if you like the content today, please do consider subscribing and hitting that little bell icon to make sure you get notifications when new content is uploaded. So there are a handful of things that I was looking for in the search for a you know, perfect on-camera monitor and I've used OC in the past so when I came across the OC T7 it really really checked off all of my boxes. I apologize in advance if it sounds like this is a paid advertisement, I promise it is not. Like I said when I found this it really checked off all my boxes and I literally begged OC to let me review this uh, and I will be buying another one in the future, in the near future hopefully uh, because it's just really, it's just across the board an amazing amazing monitor at an amazing price. So what I want to do today is just quickly go through that list of things that I think make a good monitor into a great monitor and then the OCT7 into basically the best monitor on the market. Of course, if you want a monitor that has very specific functions like camera control or external recorder capability, then that's a different story. So first up is price, and the price on this and its bigger brother, the G7, actually just came down, which actually first brought my attention to this monitor. Keep in mind the other monitors that have all that this has, the size, the brightness, the functions, will often cost you double, triple, or even more in some cases. Whether this is your first monitor or you've used a handful of other monitors like I have, I can guarantee you that everything that's built into this monitor is definitely going to be worth the price. The second thing, but honestly not even the second most important thing, is its headline feature, and that's its brightness. Now anytime that I make a monitor review, the number one comment that I get is it's not bright enough for outdoor use. And yeah, 500 nit monitors are not going to be bright enough to use comfortably in an outdoor setting, but you know, there are a handful of 1000 nit, 2000 nit monitors in the market. The thing is, with a lot of those, you'll either be getting very loud fan noise, or you're going to be making a sacrifice somewhere else. The OCT7 is not 500 nits, it's not 1000 nits, it's not even 2000 nits. This is a 3000 nit monitor and there's no fan. Now I've had it sitting here at full brightness for probably like an hour or over an hour now, and it's warm, but it's not even close to hot or anything that would concern me whatsoever. It's also worth noting that at that highest brightness, the image still looks spectacular. The contrast, the colors, everything is really, really nice, uh, unlike what you get with some of the cheaper high bright monitors. You've got all the pro features that you could want here. I mean, you've got your aspect ratios, safe marker, center marker, crosshatch, you've got false color and multiple customizable modes of false color, which we'll talk about in a second. You've got zebras, histogram, waveforms, and of course waveforms, you have Luma, RGB, and RGB parade. You've got vector scopes, you've got focus assist and focus peaking, and we'll talk about that in a second as well. You've got your look, which is your 3D LUTs. There are some loaded into here, but you can also add, I believe, up to 16 from an SD card. You've got your audio meter, you've got your image resize and then back in the main menu you've got things like a uh, screen rotation which also does have auto rotation you've got anamorphic modes uh, you can calibrate it of course completely how you need to but the colors and everything out of the box are really really great there's just really not a lot that you can't do with this monitor but let's get into that just a bit more in detail because of course a lot of monitors also have waveforms false color stuff like that no big deal right it is a big deal. One, you've got auto rotate, which doesn't come in a lot of monitors. Two, you've got multiple modes of false color, which not only shows the full spectrum, but you can show different modes for different cameras that only highlights the critical uh, exposure values for like skin tones or your mi middle gray, or gray card. So that way you can really quickly, just at a glance, get your exposure, nail it, and then go back to shooting. You've got focus peaking and focus assist, and one of those modes doesn't even require any extra colors on your image. It just ultra sharpens your image, makes it really easy to see what's in focus without all those annoying colors all over your image, which can sometimes look weird, be distracting, and also just look weird if you have a client looking at your monitor. Now there still is a lot more to the functions that are built into this monitor, but it could go on forever. So I'm going to make a separate video to go in depth, step by step through all of the things that are in this menu, how to navigate the menu, how to get things set up uh, and all that in you know all its glorious detail. So if you wanna see that, be sure to check the link on screen or down in the video description below. I will put that there as soon as it's ready. 
Next up is build quality. And a lot of the monitors that come in uh, at or under about the $400 price mark are very plasticky. And this one is made of a plastic, of course, but it's a really high quality plastic polycarbonate with an aluminum frame inside. And that means that even though it is lightweight, it's still extremely rugged. One prime example of that is that the screw thread on the bottom of this is reinforced. So if you want to grab the monitor to tilt it or to twist it, it's not going to put so much stress onto the plastic body that you're worried about actually cracking it or splitting it apart. That is absolutely absolutely not something I can say for other monitors that I've tried. Pretty much all of the other monitors that I've tried that are under this price. Next up are the connections. And again, this is the T7, which has HDMI in and out. It's compatible up to 4K 30 frames per second. The big brother, the G7, does also have SDI connections. And I really like that those connections are on the back of the monitor because while I was using, very happily using, the HCM700 also from OC, those connections are on the bottom and a wider monitor mount like this one right here would actually block the inputs. So I couldn't use something like this and it really limited what monitor mounts I could use with that monitor. This is powered by a single NPF style battery and with a battery like this NPF 770, for example, that's 32 watt hours, I could get about one and a half or two hours uh, on full brightness. Uh, this does also have a DC in port and it comes with both a cable to power this from wall power and a DTAP cable. Those are really gonna be critical when you're working with a high bright monitor like this. And it's great that they're both included because you know that they're gonna work and you know that they're gonna be up to OC quality standards. I do wish that this had double hot swappable battery slots on the back, but honestly, I'm going to be powering it from external power most of the time. So for me, it's not really that big of a deal. Now last, but probably for me, the most important is the user interface. It's incredibly simple, but incredibly powerful. As you can see here, there's only a single joystick. And of course you can use this up, down, left, right. You can also push it and you're gonna control absolutely everything with that single joystick. Now, while that does sound limiting, it's actually extremely, extremely easy. That's mostly thanks to OC's user interface, which allows you to set up to eight custom pages, and each of those pages can have one or multiple custom functions built into them. So you can have different pages for different situations or for different uses. Like for example, I have this page set up just for shooting. It has things like uh, your aspect ratio, center marker, has my focus assist features, and then I can just toggle to the next page and that's got my exposure tools where I have waveforms, false color, things like that. So I can very quickly at the push of a single button go from all of these features, aspect ratios, uh, peaking and things like that, to having both of these functions in one single button push. I mean, you can't do that with any other monitor. Typically what you'll get is four, maybe five, sometimes less function buttons and you have to program those to the things that you use most often and then you have to remember which button does what and if you wanna turn them on, you have to do it one by one and then turn them off one by one. But with this, you can literally set up different pages for different situations and then just toggle back and forth between those pages and it's just extremely, extremely fast and easy. So to boil it down to the absolute basics, you can have at minimum eight pages, and even if those have only one custom function in each of the pages, you've got eight custom functions, which is more than most monitors. But you can put multiple functions on each page, like I said, which just can't go back. For example, on my shooting page here, you can see that I have one, two, three, four, five custom functions built in. Uh, you can then, of course, in these pages, individually go and turn things on and off. If I wanna turn my aspect ratios off, boom turn them back on, boom. So not only do you have pages for certain situations for shooting and then for exposure, but you can just go in and quickly toggle things on and off within each of those pages. So I mean, it doesn't get any faster than that. It doesn't get any more powerful than that. And if you want to add something else to here, just click add new tool, scroll through, click it and add it and you're good to go. I mean, it, it really is absolutely the best user interface that I've ever used on a monitor. So if you haven't got the point by now, this is a seven inch, 3000 nit monitor with no fan noise. It's got great color. I think it's 16 million colors with uh, 1200 to one contrast ratio. The image looks fantastic. You've got built in lots, all the custom functions you can need. The best user interface on the market. It's lightweight for its size, but it's still very robust. You've got the cheaper HDMI only option. If you don't need SDI, there's no reason to waste money on a more expensive monitor, but you're not losing out on any of the features. And then if you do need SDI, they've got the G7 and that has all of the greatness that I talked about today, just with the added benefit of having SDI connections as well. Using a seven inch monitor, using a high bright monitor like this with no fan noise, using this user interface, it really is impossible to go back. But oh man, really, I mean, I'm not lying here. If you're looking for a monitor, a first monitor, a second monitor, a 10th monitor, whatever, if you've been frustrated with other monitors, uh, if you need something brighter, if you need something bigger, 
no matter who you are, this is an amazing monitor and I highly, highly recommend it. I will be picking up another one to use on my second camera or just as a backup because I like having a backup in case something happens. This monitor will be pretty much living on my camera from now on. So again, keep in mind, I will be making a second video with a really in-depth tutorial about how to use this monitor and just to show you everything that really is built in there in a little bit more detail. But if you have any questions for now, please do let me know down below and I will do my best to get back to you. Otherwise, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, thank you for watching.